at the maternal health statistics in India, a woman dies in childbirth every 15 minutes. And two children under the age of five die every minute. And a lot of these lives can be saved only if women have access to timely and critical health information. As Dr. Aparna Hegre, who is the founder of the NGO Arman, says, pregnancy is not a disease. Childhood is not an ailment. Dying due to a natural life event is not acceptable. Just to give you an idea of the scale and operations of this NGO, uh, Arman is operational across 19 states in India. They partner with 40 NGOs, 97 hospitals, they have trained over 366,000 health workers all across India and have served over 44 million beneficiaries so far. Now, thanks to the widespread availability of cell phones all across India, Arman runs a variety of mobile-based health awareness programs, both towards training health workers as well as towards generating awareness amongst beneficiaries. One such program is the M Mitra program, this is targeted at pregnant women and new mothers in the city of Mumbai and its suburbs. Once a woman is enrolled into this program, she will receive a pre-recorded uh, automated voice message containing critical health information and timed according to her gestational age. For instance, at four months of pregnancy, she may receive a reminder to continue taking iron tablets. Post-birth, she may receive messages explaining uh, the importance of child immunization, as well as reminders for upcoming immunizations. So a total of 141 pre-recorded voice messages are sent throughout the program during pregnancy and up till one year after birth. And the importance of listening to these messages has been shown to have significant positive impact on health outcomes for both the mother and the baby. For instance, 17% points increase in infants with tripled birth weight at the end of the year, and 36% points increase in women knowing the importance of taking iron tablets. Uh, and I must highlight, these are women from underserved communities, hence this is a great source of information for them. However, a key challenge faced by Arman is that up to 40% women drop off from the program gradually. And to avoid this, Arman uses an intervention called live service calls, whereby a health worker will call this, this woman and try to understand why they're not able to engage with the calls. Is it a logistic reason, calls coming at an inconvenient time or in a language they don't understand? But more often, it is the health worker having to explain to them the importance of listening to these messages. But you can imagine, at the scale of India, this is just the Amitra program focusing on Mumbai and its suburbs. There are almost 25,000 new women enrolling into the program every month. And of course, the NGO has very limited support staff. So let's say if we can only make 1,000 service calls each week, the question is, which 1,000 women do we call? This is a limited resource allocation problem, the limited resource being service calls in this case. Now, traditionally, limited resource allocation problems have been solved using restless multi-arm bandits. We can model the problem in the same way. We have N arms representing the beneficiaries, and we can only pull K arms at any given time uh, to maximize a certain predefined reward, which is listenership in our case. We model each arm or each beneficiary as a Markov decision process, model this as a two-state, two-action problem. The states represent their listenership behavior, good or bad, and the actions are whether they're chosen to receive a service call or not. And of course, then there's an underlying probability transition matrix, which would give you the probability of transitioning from, let's say, a bad state to a good state, with or without receiving an intervention. But of course, these parameters are unknown to us a priori. But we do have access to past data from the program for women who have already participated in the program. So we have access to their demographic profile, uh, some features uh, like age, income, education. And we have access to their call listenership behavior, both with and without receiving interventions. The intervention data, however, is very limited. We've developed uh, several algorithms to be able to infer these model parameters. The first being a traditional two-stage kind of an approach where we first infer model parameters from this past data and then run an optimization. And finally, uh, a more holistic approach based on decision-focused learning, whereby you infer parameters that would lead to the best decision outcome. In our case, maximal engagement with the program. And once we can infer such parameters, now we can solve the planning problem. Um, for any new incoming beneficiaries or beneficiaries in the program currently, we can now get a ranking of 
who would receive the most benefit from receiving an intervention at this given week. But this is a problem inspired by the real world, and we want this to hopefully get deployed in the real world. So simulation results are not good enough. We hence evaluated this algorithm in the real world with a field study consisting of 23,000 beneficiaries divided into three groups. The first group being the current standard of care group, hence no interventions. Second being a random group where you get interventions on a random basis. The third being the AI group where you receive interventions based on AI predictions. Uh, do note, all three groups, all women, continue to receive the pre-recorded voice messages throughout uh, as per their usual schedule. Only the interventions are sent out to some women. The study ran for seven weeks long, and on average, 225 service calls were sent to two of the groups. And at the end of the study, we observed that the AI group led to a 32% reduction in drop-offs compared to the control group, and a significant improvement in listenership. And we are very proud to announce that this model has now, thanks to these you know, uh, encouraging results, this model has now been deployed by the NGO and is in use every single week to generate a list of beneficiaries who the health workers should reach out to. We have already reached out to over 300,000 women so far. And in fact, there has been, for the bottom 25 percentile of listeners, a 130 percent increase in exposure to health content. And here is a nice video of a mother who has benefited from the program. Now with AI, we can actually pinpoint which women out of the thousands to pick up so that our health workers can reach out to them and help them access the service better. I don't have a phone call, but I don't have a call. 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 And now we want to scale nationwide. Thanks to the encouraging results seen from the Amitra program, we continue our collaboration with Arman on the Kilkari program. Kilkari is the largest maternal M health program in the world. It's operated by Arman in partnership with the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. Kilkari has served already over 41.5 million women all across India and has 3.2 million active subscribers. Of course, we, see that we face the same challenges here as Amitra poor engagement rates, um, drop-offs from the program gradually. But due to the scale of the program, there are many more additional challenges. <coughs> Firstly, variations in listenership patterns across the country, which raises the question, does one model fit all? Secondly, we have much, due to the scale of the program, much limited call center support here, so we have to rely on other interventions. For instance, we have to rely on our incredible ASHA workers to reach out to these women in person. Finally, unlike M. Mitra, we have very limited knowledge of the beneficiary's profile here. We don't have access to their demographic data. We have no idea if they own a phone or do they only have access to a shared family phone, which usually means very limited access to the phone and hence very um, limited times at which they would actually be able to engage with the calls. And finally, we also have limited bandwidth. Due to the scale of the program, they're not able to serve all beneficiaries. In fact, if a beneficiary doesn't engage with the program for several weeks at a stretch, she may get dropped off from the system. So it becomes critical to intervene in time so that we can retain these beneficiaries in the program. So we're very excited to be working on this program. Uh, we're building multiple um, yeah, AI innovation systems to be able to learn time preferences for beneficiaries of when they would like, when they would be able to engage with the calls, how to plan with multiple interventions and so on. And yeah, so we're excited about this program. Thank you.